we made this purchase because of some of you and you may know who you are but you actually talked me into giving it a try it is this part number 1905 Edelbrock AVS2 never owned one before in my life we're gonna open this up take a gander at it also if you stick with us to the end I'm going to give you a, a, a quick little update on what's been going on and all the whys. Not excuses, just the whys. Let's get started. They gave a carburetor stud. That's a bonus. I didn't get that with that brawler I just unpackaged. Instructions. And the meat and potatoes of the package. So I had some of you, and not just on my YouTube channel, but on Mopar site uh, let me know that you took off maybe a Holly vacuum secondary and went to the AVS 2 650 and wow you couldn't believe the difference right out of the box should I say off the trailer and went out and instantly your car just had or your pickup or whatever just had gobs of more low-end torque smash stomp smoking the tires where it never did before all good testimonies i appreciate it i've not tried one i've owned several edelbrock carbs and carters so i bought one we're going to take a look at it i'm going to tell you just a couple of the main things and the main reasons why they're different than a normal what is the famed 1406 electric choke 600 eddy let's talk about the differences real quick basically three of them number one is it's got the adjustable air flap kinda like a thermal quad the old 1405's 1406 the original Edelbrock Performer carburetor had these and these sat in place of this in the back of the carburetor and these are weighted and they would sit and pivot and when you got a call for a little more CF image going into the back of the car why it would just kind of pull these open and these would kind of help siphon and the fuel out of the bowl and just that's how she worked the next thing to take notice of is these got annular boosters in there it doesn't have the typical straight leg that you would find on the old Edelbrock Performer where, you know, you got the straight leg booster that, you know, kind of come down as a steady stream like faucet style. These are, got all the little holes where it kind of comes down in a mist. It's better for, uh, supposed to be better for, you know, part throttle response, fuel atomization, all of this, that, and the other, you throw it all in the bowl and mix it up. It's supposed to be better. We're going to find out. So hopefully you can see this chart. But the 1405 and the 1406 would be the 600 Edelbrock. And it would be the automatic and manual choke. The 1405 being manual. If you look, the manual choke come with a little bigger primary jet. 98 versus 100. 100 thousandths hole size versus 98. And it come with a little smaller metering rod. So, on the primary side. So the manual choke from the factory came out running just a little bit richer on the primary side and the same on the secondary side. Some people say, well, my car ran a little faster with the manual choke. Well, it was running a little richer is what it was. But if you come down here to what we got, the 1905-1906, it even has a step up yet of the primary jet and uh, it's got a little bit bigger 
secondary jet in it. And to top that off, it's got a little smaller on the, on the steps of the metering rods. So, them are some things that are, uh, that will play a big part in how it runs. Also, if you take note up here, your manual choke, 600 Eddy, has the orange spring, which takes five inches to pull it down, and, and, uh, and the 1406 is, is the yellow one. These are all supposed to be square bore carburetors. To me, a square bore has the same size butterflies. You can see the primaries are definitely, without question, smaller than the, the secondaries. So I'm gonna say it's called square bore on paper. Really, it's a kind of a, a little bit of a spread bore, which I'm fine with. Um, so the only other thing I didn't care for on this for a brand new carburetor is the plating up here. I don't know if you can see it, but the plating isn't right. It's kind of scuffy and that's that's fine. It's it's not remanufactured. It's supposed to be brand new. But anyways, uh, we did buy this 1481 uh, part number little throttle bracket for the Chryslers to help hook it up, make it a little easier. Um, we bought this for a, you know, for a reason, uh, but we thought it would also be fun in the meantime to take this with the dragway with us right out of the box and put it on there and see how it would perform against the brawler. Really, my duster is set up to favor this. Um, it's got such a small cam in it, uh, factory stock torque converter and highway gears, 323s, that really the 650 is probably a great CFM for it. Uh, probably not having the double pumper, most people would say that it would favor this carburetor, but it would be really fun to see if the AVS2 could actually outperform the 750 double pumper brawler right at the dragway. Maybe make a couple passes with the brawler and slap this on and make a couple passes. Just see. You don't know until you try. And now for the update. Um, not excuses. We're not bothered by this. We're just, it is what it is. Uh, I was hoping to have the 440 done and in the Magnum by the end of March, early April. I was hoping to get cooperation. March for us, where we live in the northern part of, of uh, Illinois, it can be super nice, get a lot done, or it may be uh, uh, just, who knows, nasty weather, rain, snow, all of the above, right? And I don't, you all know I'm not working out of a garage. I don't have a garage. So I just wanted to throw out there that March gave us a lot of snow, a foot at one time, uh, one snowfall we had a foot, and I got nothing done except for the heads through Anthony Lane's shop. And the next thing is, is April. We went into April here and we're at the end of April now, but April came in and it was either rain, sleet, snow, or tornadoes. No guys, for real. I mean, we were in shelters and hitting the basement for, for tornadoes. Had one just a few miles from the house. So uh, it, it just really uh, hindered the car projects, let's say. Uh, we'll move on when we can. Um, Last Saturday, it snowed, so windy, they ain't racing like that. Um, this coming Saturday now, the 29th, we were planning on bringing it there. Now they got rain at 85% that day, so probably that's going to be canceled too. So I do post on the community board. I do post on my, if you go to my homepage and look at my community board, I do post there and uh, try to give updates. When I tell you, oh, we're gonna take it down on opening day, test and tune, and make a pass, if that doesn't happen or fall through, I update uh, my community board and say, hey, that's not gonna happen. And so it may not happen this Saturday either. With 85% rain and that percentage keeps rising, I doubt we race. So uh, it is what it is. Um, it'll happen when it happens. Um, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, but it would be fun to put this on right at the track in place of the brawler. Just see how it stacks up. Following the mile per hour, um, that's really 
what indicates a horsepower change is when you uh, make a change to the car and the mile per hour goes up in the eighth or the quarter or whatever. We, uh, we appreciate you guys watching. If you made it this far, thumbs up to you. And uh, I guess until next time, take care, be safe, 